Let's heading back to class. We are taking a closer look this morning at traffic safety issues in school zones. Each year there are hundreds of car accidents in these zones across the state. Our investigative team sifted through the data and found that Oregon's most dangerous zone is right here in the metro area. And Fox 12 investigative reporter Ezra Kaplan is here to walk us through that report. Ezra. Yeah, you know, while we spend a lot of time and attention on keeping students safe at school, keeping them safe on the way to school is just as important. Whether walking, biking, or busing, those kids are counting on the grown-ups to play their part in keeping school zones safe. Sitting in the student drop-off line, there's one thing at the top of nearly every parent's mind. And the safety concerns start before the kids even get to school. Every year, there are hundreds of car accidents in school zones across Oregon. Our team analyzed five years of data from 2018 to 2022. There were more than 1,000 accidents with 843 injuries and five deaths during that time. We took all that information and we mapped it according to school zone district. What we found was that Beaverton topped the charts with 79 crashes. That's more than twice as many as Portland right next door. I took our findings to Leah Beato, who runs the Safe Routes to School program for Beaverton School District. Do you have any sense of why that might be? I don't really have an answer as to the why. I just would say that it's also a concern for our parents. As a result, more students than ever are getting driven to school. And so in Beaverton um, last year, most students either reside in their walkable area or they're provided with a school bus. Yet we see about 35% of kids are driven in a single car trip to school. She says it's creating an unfortunate cycle. The more cars on the road, the more crashes there are. And the more crashes there are, the less safe the roads feel for walking or biking. And road design can play a major factor. Beaverton is uniquely set up in that we have a lot of major arterial roads running in front of our schools. When those busy roads cross, the rate of accidents can be even higher. When we looked at the map, a few clusters emerged, most notably around Aloha High School, which sits at the intersection of Southwest Kinnaman Road and 185th Avenue. However, we don't get a lot of parent complaints around that area. I don't know if it's because it's surrounding a high school and we tend to not hear as much from high school parents as we do with our younger students. The Washington County Sheriff's Department, on the other hand, is well aware of the dangerous intersection. If I look at our heat map for all of the traffic stops and crashes and what have you all around the county, that area has a bigger glow, if you will. Sergeant John Wilson leads the traffic division and pulled some of his own data to compare to ours. For that five-year period, our office did I think over uh, cl close to 1,500 traffic stops in that area. I mean, there's really? a lot of enforcement in that area over a five-year period. He points to the sometimes confusing road design in the area as a reason for the cluster. But he says a lot of the blame rightly falls on the drivers. When COVID first hit and the roads were just empty yep. and, and we saw that huge increase in reckless driving behavior and really dangerous driving behaviors, those behaviors haven't subsided at the same rate. He says the number one behavior putting student safety in jeopardy is speeding. That's why his officers will be out and visible around schools as kids return to class. And just making the presence and letting everybody know, hey, school's coming back in session. Kind of a reminder that, yeah. that you guys are there. Yep, it's time to slow down. Uh, if, if you haven't been in the, you know, it's, it's going to be 20 miles an hour again in this area in the morning and the afternoons. It's one thing every school zone in the state has in common, a 20 mile per hour speed limit. They're set at 20 uh, for, for a reason. If the car's traveling 40 uh, as opposed to 20, then the person has only about a 20% chance of survival. We really need to slow down in our school zones. Um, you know, we all have somewhere important to be in the morning, but there's nothing more important than the safety of our kids. So next time you see the yellow sign, it's a good reminder that 20 is plenty. And while Beaverton topped the list, McMinnville, Ben Lapine, Salem Kaiser, and Medford school districts all made it into the top five for the number of school zone accidents. 
Portland Public Schools wasn't even in the top 10. If you want to learn more about the crash data for your school district, head over to kptv.com where we have an interactive map loaded with all the data for every district in the state. Very interesting, Ezra. Talk to us about high school school zones. Is there something yeah. to be said for the newer drivers? Joe and I were just, <laughs> just talking about this. Yeah. His daughter Today is my daughter's first yeah. day of driving oh to her high school. And you yeah. know, and that's a really big deal. It's one of the reasons we saw some of these clusters around high schools is that those drivers are less experienced, yeah. right? They maybe are just getting their licenses. That increases the likelihood of an accident, but it also means all the more reason for those of us who have some more right. experience driving to really slow down, pay attention, because we got to worry about the kids on the street, yes. also some of the kids behind the wheel. She still has her student driver sticker on the car. We're not taking it off for a while not because yet. she's no. still learning. So, uh, Great information, Ezra. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, it's you. something we all kind of think about yeah. as we get those kiddos out to school.